everybody. Uh, I wanted to do a quick video here since there is this wonderful mass migration happening right now uh, to the Fediverse, to, um, uh, what do you call it, to Mastodon and such. Uh, I wanted to do a quick little video that was going to talk about my recommendations for getting started. So let's say you, you're brand new, you have no idea what to do, um, where to start. Let's take a look at that. So, uh, first of all, really quick, Mastodon is one of the software systems platforms that make up a kind of this larger network called the Fediverse. What is it? It's, it's a bunch of different types of servers that are all kind of social media related, um, which, uh, which all speak the same language. So kind of like email does, you know, you, you could have uh, your email hosted on uh, Gmail. You could have it hosted with, um, boy, who's who's around now? Fastmail, Lavabit. Um, and you can communicate with each other, right? But you're all speaking email. Uh, you don't need to email other Gmail users because you have Gmail and, and whatnot. It's the same thing here, right? It's not one server, it's many servers, but they're all speaking the same language. So the hard part for new users is, which server do you start with? And, and I'm going to help you out a little bit here. There's this lovely site called instances.social, and it's like a little wizard to help you kind of find your home. So uh, I'm going to run through it real quick with you and kind of show you my recommendations. What languages do you speak? Um, I'm going to go with English. Uh, would you prefer an instance with a user account? Now, here, here's an interesting thing. Coming from Twitter, a lot of people will think, oh, I want a big instance because I want to be able to reach a lot of people. That's not necessarily the case, though. Remember, everybody on the network, on the whole Fediverse network, can communicate. So you already have access to everybody. What they're asking here is, on your local server, what size do you want? And in this case, I find a sweet spot is somewhere between like 2,500 to 1,000. So I'm going to say less than 1,000. Now, <clears throat> moderation rules. Um, I personally don't like to get surprised with nudity or pornography um, without tags on my instance. I might have people walking around and I want to just be able to scroll freely. So I'm going to say uh, that should be forbidden. That should be forbidden. Um, and if they have the tag, then I'm fine. Links to illegal content, let's say no. Uh, spam, no. Advertising, why? No. And spoilers without content warning. Now, this is my personal preferences. I hate spoilers. Um, all right, so that sets some tags for me here. And now I've got a little search going. Now, it looks like it didn't pick up my my user counts here. So I'm going to say 250. What did I say, 2,500 before? No, 250 to 1,000. Like I said, that's what I think of as the sweet spot for a home instance. Um, and that's going to give me this wonderful list, and it shows me kind of their user count, what type of server it is, if it's a general one or if it's for fandom, for religion, for uh, motion graphics. And remember, whatever you pick here, you still have access to everybody. What this is doing is creating a local community for you. And why is that important? Well, once you get in to Mastodon, you have access to several different timelines. Um, by default, when you first load, I believe you will be in, oh boy, I haven't, I haven't changed this back in a long time here. Uh, um, no, yes, advanced mode. Okay. When you first load up into Mastodon, it's going to look like this and you'll have a single timeline here and a bunch of things on the side. One of the things on the side is this local bar. That is your instance, your server. Now, in my case, I'm on tilde.zone. Um, so this is all people on tilde.zone. And that's great. If you've picked an instance, a smaller instance, uh, especially one that follows your kind of interests, you know, maybe maybe that's a fandom, maybe that is uh, representing uh, LGBT, um, here we go, gay communist nerds, right? Whatever your thing is, that's going to give you a home timeline of that type of person, uh, that type of people, right? And so that's great when you're first getting started out because you can go to this local timeline. It's going to move a little slower. You're going to be able to engage with it and you're going to, you're going to pop out a little bit more and people will recognize you. And that's a great way to see, you know, 
this, this basic activity. And as you go through and you look at it, you're going to see they'll be using hashtags, they'll be interacting with other people, and you can start following those people. And that's an awesome way to, to kind of build your little local community. Now, that is, that is fine. You still have access to everybody, right? Now, this is the federated timeline, and this is the, the everybody timeline. Uh, it moves a lot quicker. This is a lot more like, you know, a random, uh, <laughs> a, a random Twitter feed of everybody, right? Um, technically speaking, it is not everyone in the entire Fediverse network. It is only people on the servers that your server can see, which is kind of a vague distinction, and it honestly doesn't really matter much. It, you can generally consider it everybody. everybody. Uh, but most of the time when you're using Mastodon, you're going to spend it on the home timeline. And this is made up of people you follow or hashtags you follow. So one of my recommendations is when you get started, the very first thing you're going to want to do is edit your profile, add a picture, and create a post of introductions. So um, let's see. Introduction. I'm going to search for that uh, hashtag here, and we can see people that are introducing themselves. Here's an archaeologist. Here's a researcher in psychology. Uh, this is recommended as the first thing you do when you get started. Put a, put a picture on, give your introductions, and use hashtags because those are what's searchable here. You can search for people. You can search for hashtags. And a really cool thing happens when you do. Um, these are followable. So maybe not introductions is one that you want, but maybe you're into, oh, I don't know, astronomy, right? You click on astronomy, and up in the corner here, this little icon is a follow icon. You can follow a hashtag just like you would follow an individual. And then that home timeline is going to show up with all of that content as well. So when you're getting started, Pick your instance. I recommend somewhere in the sweet spot. Try to avoid the, the big uh, few instances, mastodon.social especially. It, it seems really tempting to go with the biggest, but it's actually not really helping you because this, uh, this local timeline is going to move just as fast as the federated timeline. You're not going to really be able to engage with it very well. And so that undercuts one of your valuable resources when you're getting started. So pick a mid-sized instance. Um, if, if you have the time to do a little research, uh, you can poke around on a few of them, read their about page, read their, uh, their policies. A lot of them, uh, when, you, when you click on, let's say, about here to the zone, they'll give you a little blurb about that server, about their server rules, and each server has a different set of mores uh, that you need to follow. So you're going to find ones that have different moderation rules, where different things are okay, where uh, you know, other places they might not be okay. Find one that works for you. Then when you join there, try to engage, try to, uh, to, to make new friends, basically, right? Uh, follow hashtags, follow individuals, reply to people uh, before you follow them. Uh, is, is kind of a nice way to like say, hey, I'm going to be interacting with you, and it's more likely to get you a follow back. Um, and overall, just try to be kind. It's, uh, it's a big network, but it's also um, very well policed by the individual moderators on the individual instances. So like I said, they have different rules, right? Um, if your instance has rules and you're seeing content coming in that is not following those rules, you have the ability to, to flag that. Well, individually, you can block it yourself. You can mute it so that you don't see it, but you can also report it, and that report will go to your admin and to that other person's admin as a flag, and you can you know mark the, um, the, the, the messages that were problematic. You can say why, and the administrators or moderators will review that and take individual action on their individual servers. So it might, whatever they were doing might be okay on their server, but not on yours. So your uh, moderator could block that content or force it to be hidden or behind a content warning uh, when it comes into your, your network. 
or if it's um you know if a lot of reports are coming in from the same server maybe there is a, a server out there that is allowing people to join not moderating their content and it's getting flooded by trolls one of the things moderators can do is defederate with that entire instance they could say you know what our server is no longer talking to that server and they're gone um now that won't take them out of the entire network but if enough servers do that sort of behavior it does basically disconnect them and that's what happened with the gab servers when they popped up um anyway so there's a lot of different moderation tools available to you but take a look at your own server and look at what their rules are because that's the ones you'll be following and those are the admins you're going to be kind of answerable to for your own behavior. Now, is, is I'm putting kind of a lot of emphasis on choosing an instance, and it seems like it's a kind of a high bar, a lot of decision making to do, but it's also not set in stone. You can move. Um, it's a little it's a little weird to think about, but you know, if you were on an email server, if you were on Gmail, how do you move over to Outlook, right? Well, you could just create a new email and you have your contact list and you can bring it over. But do people know that you moved over? Not really. Not with email. You'd have to let everybody know. With uh, with the Fediverse, it's a little bit easier. There are actually moderation tools, or not moderation, there's uh, migration tools built in here. So if you decide after a while, you know, this server wasn't right for me, I want to try another one. Um, you can you can log into yours and say, hey, I'm going to move to that one. And you log into that one and say, hey, I'm moving from this one. And it'll automatically move over your followers and the people that you're following. It won't move over your, your past message behavior. Um, that is kind of attached to the old account. And that's, it's kind of a byproduct of the whole network. You can't, you can't retroactively say, no, all of those messages now belong over here. But at least all of your followers will automatically be following you at this new place. And that's really cool. So, you know, Pick, a, pick an instance, um, like I said, try to stay in the mid-tier. Um, if you find one that's that's usually at these sizes, uh, you can see their kind of timeline and see the kind of uh, activity they have. But the chances are if they're at that size, if they're you know close to 1,000 users, 500 users, they've been around a little while, they probably have some stability. So you're not joining an instance with like 10 people which who knows if that admin is is going to stick around and keep up with it. And you're not jumping into one of these monstrous, um, you know, 90,000 people instances where it, you're going to be lost in the flood, right? So try to stay in the middle and don't be afraid to uh, to move on if, if that's not working for you. You can also sign up for several, you know, simultaneously and you have multiple accounts. But in the beginning, just try to keep it simple. Stick with one and do your best. All right. Good luck. Um, follow hashtags and uh, and and be kind.